Hey guys, I'm Alex Taylor from the Riding with Alex Taylor YouTube channel. Today we have a set of AFR 210 enforcer heads that we're getting ready to put on our 6.0 LS block that we just pulled from the local yard. We're getting it ready for a swap. But while we're at it, I wanted to go over proper valve train geometry as well as how to find the proper push rod length for your project. Okay, let's get to it. Diving straight into this, there are a lot of factors that influence push rod length. Things like your deck height, your cylinder heads, maybe you're using an aftermarket head like this, head gasket thickness, rocker arm ratio and assembly, your camshaft type and base circle, valve length or valve stem height, or if you're using lash caps. Before you get started, you're going to need just a few tools, which include adjustable push rods, your rockers, and a Sharpie pen or grease. At this point in your project, I'm sure you don't have the rockers on or the push rods installed because that's what we're trying to determine in this video. However, for demonstration purposes, I have installed the stock push rods as well as the stock rockers. We're going to be working with cylinder two. We first want to get the cam to where it's on its base circle for cylinder two. As you can see here, the exhaust rocker on cylinder number two does have tension on it as the valve is open. However, the intake is in a ready position without tension on it. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the engine until we get the valve to close and remove the tension from the rocker so that way we can move forward. Now that the cam is on the base circle and we can see that both rockers do not have tension on them, I'm going to go ahead and remove the rockers and remove the push rods. So that way we can get ready to coat the tip of the valve stem. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cleaner and wipe the tips of the valve stem so that way I can coat it with Sharpie. This is going to allow us to see our sweep pattern of our rocker. And now I have our adjustable push rod checker right here. For reference, a stock LS push rod is around 7400 long. For demonstration purposes, I have gone ahead and shortened our adjustable push rod so I can show you what not to do before we get to how to do it. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. Anytime you're doing this, you want to check and make sure that it's seated in the lifter. Then you want to make sure it's seated in the rocker as well. I'm going to reinstall the rocker here. Just snug it down a little bit. Okay. As you can see, the push rod is a little bit loose. So we have some movement back and forth, up and down as well. You can see that here with the rocker tipping like that. You have more slop, I should say, than you want. So we need to make the push rod longer. Ideally, we would be able to adjust the push rod with it still installed, but due to a lack of space on this type of setup, we are not able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this rocker back off, and then I'm going to pull the push rod out, turn it a couple turns, and go from there. At home, don't be frustrated if you end up doing this process multiple, multiple times. It's going to be a process of trial and error as you find that right length, but that is just part of it, so don't let it frustrate you. To speed up the process here, however, I'm going to take the stock push rod and get it pretty close to the same length. With an aftermarket head, it's very, very common and will probably happen that you're either going to have a little bit shorter or a little bit longer push rod or need to have. So we're gonna go about right there. I'm gonna err on the side of short because we don't want the push rod to create tension because it's too long. I'm going to pop this back on one more time. Snug that down. We don't have any movement anymore. We don't have any rock back and forth. The push rod doesn't move, but I feel like we have it a little bit too long still. We don't have any movement at all. Don't even have any movement there. So we're going to pull it back out and loosen it, or I should say shorten it about another turn. shorter. Something to keep in mind as you're doing that at home rather than blindly turning 
uh, go ahead and find a method that you can use to keep track of your turns or rotations or length just so you're not going back and forth chasing your tail when it's not necessary. That I did about a turn and a half. Or about a turn shorter, I should say. Going to snug this down one more time. Okay, that's actually feeling like a pretty good starting point. So here you see we have a little bit of movement. There's no t actual tension on it. Um, kind of like you would see in like your stock setup over here. So a little bit of tension, but the push rod is seated in the cup of the rocker back here and it doesn't move up and down. So that gives us a good starting point. We're gonna work from here. I'm gonna snug this just a little more. Okay, moving on to the exhaust side. I have already adjusted this to the proper length following the same process that we did on the intake side. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in. This one's good to go, but that gets us to the point where we can go ahead and rotate the engine. So checking to make sure it is seated. As you can see, same situation as over here. What we're going to do now is we are going to rotate the engine at least two turns. When you're doing this at home, try to minimize the amount of movement that you do side to side. And when you're taking your rocker off, make sure to be careful so you don't mess up the sweep pattern that we're looking for. Um, as we rotate, when we come back here, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're landing on the base circle of the cam again. So you'll want to leave them with no tension, just like this. So let's go ahead and get it rotated and then we're gonna pull the rockers off, check the sweep pattern. Now we are back on our base circle after making two rotations. This is the point, one more time, where we want to be very careful removing this so we don't mess up the white pattern. Um, what we're calling the white pattern you're getting ready to see is the mark that was left by the tip of the rocker moving back and forth across the tip of the valve stem. Okay, now we're just going to remove the rockers and see how the pattern looks. This is going to tell us how to make our adjustments moving forward. We'll go over later the different patterns and what that means as far as what you need to do to your push rod length based on your pattern. But we'll see what this one says and go from there. Looking at the exhaust side, we can see that the pattern is towards the intake side of the engine. So this is gonna be your exhaust side, your exhaust side, intake side. We can see that the pattern is back here towards the intake side and not making a full sweep across the tip of the valve stem. That's actually the same over here on the intake side as well. We can see that the pattern is at the back. This means that our push rod is a little bit too short. So we need to go ahead and make the push rod just a little bit longer, recode the tip of the valve stem, and then go from there. That'll tell us what further adjustments we need to make. ahead and went about one turn on each of the push rods. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the rockers. Make sure everything is seated once more. Also being careful to minimize the movement on the tip as we are checking this pattern, or to not mess up the ink so we can check the pattern accurately. Snug it down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the two full rotations once more making sure it's land on the base circle. We can see that we're back on the base circle. We have a little bit of movement here. Again, be careful doing that. You don't want to mess up your pattern. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rockers and see if this is a good pattern to go with. If not, we'll do this one more time, but let's hope it's good. Yeah. 
Our goal as we're finding our push rod length and what's proper is to make sure that the tip of the valve is making full contact. With the patterns that we see here, we can verify that that is the case. So now that we have a good sweep pattern with full contact, we're going to go ahead and pull the push rod so we can take a measurement. Keep in mind as you're doing this to be careful and try not to move them because they are adjustable. But we can go from here. I'm going to grab the tape measure, get our measurements so we can get on to ordering some push rods. Okay, now I've got both measurements for the intake and exhaust push rod. I'm going to verify that on a different cylinder just to check. The push rods are typically sold in increments of maybe 25, 30, 50 thousandths. So you're going to just get as close as you can when it comes to that. So a little bit of variation, that's okay. Now we've gone over basic valve train geometry and how to find push rod length. Once you get into a little bit more aggressive builds or maybe race applications, it's not uncommon to find that your push rods vary from cylinder to cylinder down to the thousands of an inch. But we're not worried about that right now. So let's go ahead and recap a couple key points that we touched in this video so you can get your push rods ordered. The white pattern across the tip of the valve is what indicates proper geometry. You're going to want to see a full contact pattern on the tip of the valve, but make sure that it doesn't roll off of the edge or fall off. Also, the type of rocker used influences how the pattern look. From the tip that we have on these stock rockers to say a roller rocker, you're going to see a different pattern. Next, the push rod length affects the location of the pattern from the intake manifold to the exhaust manifold side. Lastly, interference between the rocker and retainer will give a false reading. Keep these points in mind as you check your push rod length and you'll be good to go. And that wraps it up for this video. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something that helps propel your project forward. If you guys have any other questions about this topic, make sure to comment below or call the guys at Airflow Research and they will get you set up and on your way. In the next video, we'll be going over adjustable guide plates, so stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe. I think I need to get back to work putting this together, so I'm going to call it for the day. See you guys in the next video.